Mm. Hey, you got on Western boots too. Everybody's into yeah, boots. Yeah, I wear them. I've worn them since I lived in California quite a bit. That's and, uh, great. Does it matter that the tie is going on the bias? Oh, okay. I'm always a little askew. <laughs> Are you always on the bias? Right. <laughs> okay, well. Well, Tom, we share a common friend, Bob Schieffer. Bob Schieffer, the uh, pride of Texas, son of Fort Worth in the Dallas area. Yes. Fine guy, even though he works for that other outfit. Right. Well, you got Marvin Kalb. Marvin Kalb. Marvin Kalb, right. Yeah. So maybe you'll get Bob Schieffer one. Well, that'd be all right with me. I'd like to have them all over there. They're good fellows at CBS. How did that come about, Marvin moving to NBC? I think that he and Bill Small, Bill Small being the new president of NBC News, former executive vice president of CBS News, had a very strong personal relationship. Marvin's contract was up, and the news business, like almost any other business in America today, is constantly in search of people that they feel that can help out in the final product. And Marvin Kelb is a well-regarded, highly respected diplomatic correspondent, and uh, we were able to make a deal with him, I'm grateful to say. And then what is Richard Valeriani going to do? He's going to come to the Today program and be the Washington interviewer in the morning, which is a very important part of our program. And then where does Bob Abernathy go? Bob Abernathy is still trying to make up his mind about what he's going to do. I, he's an old, dear friend, and I think one of the most underappreciated people on television. Very thoughtful, very bright, cares a lot about the business and, and, and how it is conducted. And there's a possibility, I suppose, that he'll come back to California, where he is very highly regarded in the Los Angeles area in a similar capacity. Uh, both for the network and for the local news, but I just don't know yet. Tom, the Today Show is being revamped quite a little, and it's, you know, it's very obvious to viewers, I think, even though they may not have a close association with the business. But is this a direct attempt to compete better with Good Morning America? Well, um, sure, I suppose that it is. I mean, but it is not a copycat kind of thing. What we're trying to do is make it a more interesting, livelier program. We're doing that because we know, as Good Morning America has demonstrated, there is a vast audience out there that is not watching any of these programs. We'd like to have some of them. Plus the fact that I like to believe that even if Good Morning America were not around, we would be doing something like this. I felt very strongly when I came onto the program four years ago now that it needed some fresh air, if you will, that today has been on the air for 28 years, wonderful institution in American television, but like all else in American life that depends on public taste and uh, public support, it must change occasionally to reflect the changing times and the changing taste. So having said all that, I also want to say that the core of the program will remain what it is. That is that the news is paramount, it is uh, produced by the news division, and it will be a place that you can turn to find out what has happened overnight, what is likely to happen this week, and what will happen in the future, and get some information on which you can make some decisions about this changing world in which we live. That's my commercial. Did you have direct input about uh, Willard Scott coming to yes. today? Mm. I didn't say, when they said, what about Willard Scott, I said, I think he's terrific. I had known him in Washington. I think he's one of the most natural television personalities that I know. He is 110% joyful and optimistic 24 hours a day. And wears funny things in his lapel. Oh, he'll, yeah. <laughs> Willard is just a person who loves life, He's very bright and wants to bring a little happiness to people. And there's a need for that. What has been the public reaction to having him on? Well, I think at first people were a bit jarred by it, frankly. And uh, he'll be the first to tell you that as well, because he represented such a kind of radical change for the Today program. But all of the mail now indicates that people like him a lot. People used to say to me, I can't, Willard Scott? I, why, what are you? And I'd say, check with me in three months or six months. And almost all of those people have now come back to me and said, he's made a believer out of me. You're going to work the conventions. Yes. And I wonder, Tom, really, uh, it seems like it's all so cut and dried this year. Well, this year, we certainly know who the nominees are going to be. But let's not forget the issues. Let's not forget what's at stake here. We're electing, we're in the course of the conventions, we're nominating first the candidates. And then we're looking at the two or three people, given John Anderson as a factor, who may be the President of the United States in the next four years with enormous control over our lives and really a major part of the responsibility for the conduct of policies in the world. Then too, we're at a watershed time in America where we're trying to come to grips with energy, with the economy, with 
the changing generations. That is, Ronald Reagan represents one generation, Jerry Brown represents another. We're going to have more of the Jerry Browns, and Gary Hart's, and the young politicians in the future coming along running for office with their values shaped not on the Depression or World War II, but on instead Vietnam and the energy crunch. We have to look at that, that change in America as well. Do you think that they are going to change the rule that will permit the delegates? I doubt it. I know what you're, about the Democrats. Right. Will they be able to change their mind? Right. I think you'll see a lot of stirring around on that. But I do believe that the Carter forces have the situation sufficiently under control, uh, thanks to, in part, to your fellow Texan Bob Strauss, uh, and also to Mr. White from Texas, that they won't be able to change the rules, the uh, Kennedy people. Do you think there's any reason at all for Kennedy to be hopeful? Well, I think obviously what he's up to here is to make sure that the issues that he has been speaking about and representing really within the Democratic Party uh, get a proper and appropriate attention at, on the convention floor and in the convention format. And from that point of view, I can see why he is continuing. And he has also repaired himself a little bit, I think, in the eyes of the public. They think of him as a man who's conducted himself with some dignity and with some grace, even in the face of extraordinary adversity in the political campaign. What about the future of Tom Brokaw? Um, the Eight hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, do you look forward, Tom, to one day being an anchor on Nightly News? Sure. I would like to do that at some time. I can't say in, in you know, undue modesty, well, no, it's not important. Obviously, I'd like to do that. It's like a kid wanting to grow up and play second base for the New York Yankees or for the Rangers. Uh, the fact of the matter is, though, that my life will not be made or broken by that assignment. And it certainly won't be uh, greatly affected by what happens in the next several years. I'm 40 years old. I like to think that if I don't get it on this go-around, there's another opportunity for me. And if I don't get it then, my life won't be over. I have always had lots of interest in life, and I've always had, uh, I like to think anyhow, a very full life by pursuing those many interests. I've not been single-minded about anything, including my career. Very good. We'll, we'll play this for John Chancellor. <laughs> All right, then. He's very happy here, and he's doing very well, Bobby, as you well know, and he expects to be there through 1981, and I hope that he will be. Okay, Tom. Nice talking Thanks, with Bobby. you here nice in Nice to see you. I'll say hello to Bob Schieffer. Please do. Okay. Schieffer's never gotten so much attention. <laughs>